Hey friends, welcome to Homegrown Florida. I am Petrina and today we are going to talk about everything you ever wanted to know about cucumbers. We're going to talk about all things cucumbers today, all the way from the different kinds of seeds, um, how to plant them from seed, how to pollinate them, what kind of fertilizers to use, how to get rid of those pesky um, pickle worms that get at them sometimes and create those tiny little holes in the cucumbers that make them very difficult to eat <laughs> all the way to when and how to harvest them i know that's always been a, like a big question as to when is the right time to harvest them so let's get right into it these are my cucumber plants that i'm growing right now and i'm going to tell you all about those but let's go ahead and start at the beginning and the beginning is seeds <laughs> so you're gonna have to get yourself a packet or two of seeds now one packet has a lot of seeds and for one family i don't know if you need quite that many seeds so in this particular one which is mi gardener um, one that i like to use a lot but there's plenty of other um, seed places that you might be interested in but mi gardener gives probably the smallest amount of seeds but i find that good because other seed companies like like mi gardener is giving me 50 seeds 50 cucumber plants is way more than I need for one year or even like three years <laughs> and the seeds last quite several years so as long as they're kept in a nice cool uh, dry place but 50 plants is plenty for me so I like that they have a smaller amount of seed counts but other um, seed companies like burpee for example they will give you hundreds of seeds in a packet and you're never going to use it and it feels a little bit like waste to me but Something to consider when you get your uh, seed packet is how many seeds are gonna be in there so that you know how many plants that you have the potential for growing. So what we do is just simply, we're gonna take our seeds out of the packet. Um, you're going to want to think about your planting time. So here in Florida, I live in a subtropical uh, climate that means that I plant cucumbers around August and September, and then I can do it again in February and March. They don't grow very well during our summers here, and obviously they don't grow well in winters because they, they don't tolerate cold very well. If you're in a more northern state, you're going to want to um, plant them, looks like here on the seed packet, after the last frost date. So if you go on um, your farmer's almanac or just um, google your last frost date with your zip code it will tell you your projected last frost date based on historical records and so you'll want to plant these then now these guys you you can start them in trays i don't recommend it i don't recommend it at all <laughs> in fact they do so much better when you direct seed them and what that means is is when you direct seed them is you actually take your seed and you place it in its forever location. So for me, it's gonna be in this bed right here. So I wanna show you the seeds. So you can see here that the seeds have like this oblong shape to them. Um, one side is kind of rounded, the other side is pointy. The actual pointy side of the seed is the one that you want to go down into the ground. So this is very common with other types of seeds like watermelons, corn, squash um, you always want to put them with the pointy side down and so i'm going to show you exactly how we do that now so we have our seed right here and they both kind of look uh, pointy but the bottom side right there is actually like the pointy side it almost has like that flat appearance and the top is kind of oval and um, widest at the center there so i'm going to take it and i'm going to plant it I'm going to stick my finger in a little hole, not much, just up to like the first knuckle. And I'm going to place that seed down in there. I'm going to kind of press him down so that he is connecting with the soil. And then I just press the soil on top. So this was one that I planted recently. And you're seeing three parts to this seedling here. So it first popped up and the first thing I saw were these two leaves right here. And these are what we call seed leaves. They are the leaves that come out from the seed 
and they're the first ones you always see on any plant, any plant that you do um, seedlings from. But then what you're starting to notice is this leaf right here looks very different than these two. This is called the true leaf. This is the, the leaf texture and shape that the plant will actually have through the rest of its life cycle. These little seed leaves are going to die off and then you'll see more and more leaves like this shape and that's the true leaf of the plant. You even can see right here in the center a tiny, tiny bit of additional leaves coming out. Now, I got lucky here. Uh, I planted two seedlings right here and only one took, which was fine. That's fine with me. I wanted one in this particular area, but if we look over here, it's a little next door neighbor. And this one, two of them did well and two of them sprouted. So now I have to make a choice. Now I'm not gonna make the choice right now because I do have them separated by, what is that, probably about three inches. Um, so they're okay for right now, but as they get bigger, they're not gonna be okay with just three inches of space. They want a decent amount of space. I like to space them, you know, four to six inches apart, especially if they're going up a trellis. If they're a bush variety, then I like to space them even more, you know, but I, I err on the side of more space than less space. Um, so I am gonna have to take a pick. And from what I can tell between these two right now, my pick is probably gonna end up being this guy, but I'm gonna give him another week or two before I make that decision. And you might be wondering why that is. Well, take a look at these true leaves on these guys. They're not very healthy, which kind of gives me some cause for concern. But this guy, this leaf right here looks very healthy and that's why I don't wanna make a decision today because these could just be in the state of dying off and that's why they look like that. Seems a little young to me to be in that state just yet, but I'm gonna give them a couple more weeks, possibly a month if, if I need to. They're gonna get kind of bushy about this size and then I'll have to make my choice. And all you have to do when you're making your choice is come down to the base with a pair of clippers and snip them. Now these guys are far enough apart that I could just potentially grab it and pull it straight out, but sometimes your seedlings get very close together and if you were to grab and just pull it out, it could disrupt the roots of the other seedlings. So I always, just erring on the side of caution, always clip them at the base when I'm thinning them. Next thing is the types of cucumbers. So the ones behind me in this trellis that you see here, this nice giant trellis of cucumbers, which makes my heart happy, <laughs> is a pickling variety. It's actually the Boston pickling cucumber, and it is a trellising variety. There's lots of different varieties, so let's kind of put them in there and their differences. Uh, the first one being the type of cucumber. So you have three types. You have a pickling cucumber, which is gonna be a smaller cucumber. You have a slicing cucumber, which is gonna be, you know, six, seven inches long. And then you have a burpless or seedless. These are like your English cucumbers and they're quite a bit longer. I mean, I have a video that I did originally on starting uh, cucumbers from seed. I'll put that right here or down in the description. And they got huge. I mean, I only needed two plants. I had much more than two plants. I ended up making a bunch of relish with them. <laughs> but you really uh, have to take into account the prolific nature of cucumbers along with the size of cucumbers and how you plan on using them. My big plan for these guys was to actually use them as a pickling cucumber, but my husband has been eating them all. <laughs> so I haven't had a chance to actually make pickles with them, uh, but that is my goal and um, that is my hope if he ever slows down with eating them all, <laughs> which I'm fine with either way. I mean, we grow food so that we can eat it, not so that we can save it. The pickling ones are designed for pickles. The slicing ones are designed for fresh eating and the burpless or seedless varieties, the English style cucumber, once again, those are made for fresh eating. Although I have used them for relish in the past because size doesn't necessarily matter as much when you're making relish as when you're making pickles. Another thing about the types of cucumber is whether they are a vining variety or a bush variety. So the ones that we have here is clearly vining. They like to climb and you can see, I don't know if you can see this right here, but they have uh, these little tendrils 
and the tendrils are what grabs onto things. And so what they've done is they either grab onto each other or they grab onto my uh, chicken wire here and climb the trellis. The other ones that you have, the, the seedlings that I showed you just a second ago, those are actually a bush style. Um, I do like them. They're not as prolific as a trellising variety, but they are good if you have limited space, uh, limited time because they're generally faster, <laughs> or um, you, know, you just don't eat as many cucumbers or don't have a need to uh, grow so many that you're pickling them. Uh, the two that I'm growing over there is the um, Bush Champion and the Space Master uh, cucumbers, and they're both small cucumbers as well. The next thing to consider with cucumbers is their pollination style. So there's actually three types of pollination styles. I'm not even going to attempt to do the names, <laughs> but really I like to lump them into two. One means they need to be pollinated. The other ones mean that they don't need to be pollinated and pollinated by insects. I have a good amount of bees still. I'm, it's, it's fall and I still have a good amount of bees pollinating this. So I haven't really had to be super meticulous about hand pollinating my cucumbers because they've been doing a really great job. I have in the past had problems with not having enough pollinators in my garden. And so what I did was is I went with the parth Parthenothic, I can't even pronounce it. I'm not going to try it. <laughs> but it's the type of cucumber that doesn't need a plant or a pollinator to pollinate it. Um, these are traditionally cucumbers meant for greenhouses, um, for hydroponic systems, uh, for anything where they're not going to be in the outside elements where pollinators can get them. So those don't necessarily need pollination but all the ones I'm growing today do need pollination and I have a whole video I'll put right there and down in the description about how to pollinate but um, today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually be pollinating some of these with my little paintbrush here see my males are all down my male flowers are all at the bottom now and my female flowers are all at top so we'll move around a little bit to get this so this one right here is a male flower and there's two ways you can tell. One, you can see the stem right here. Let me get in close. The stem is just like a regular stem. The other way that you can tell is when you look inside the flower, you see, I forget what it's called, but you see like something that is like a little poked out center. That's where the pollen is, the male pollen is. Now let's take a look at a female. And this guy right here is a female flower. And how you can tell is you have the flower and then on top of that you have, or what would be the stem, is you have this immature piece of fruit. This guy's a little guy. So hopefully you can see here, but the center is different too. It has, instead of that little pokey thing that pokes out with the pollen on it, it has this thing that has these little ridges inside of it. And that is the female part of the flower. So the first thing we're gonna do is find a male flower. And we have one right here. And I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I am just going to brush the center of that flower with my paintbrush. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get all that pollen that's on the inside of that male. And so that way I can move it over to the female. Now I'm just gonna take that pollen that was on my paintbrush and brush it on the inside of that female flower. Once you've hand pollinated or your bees have done their job, um, you're gonna know pretty quickly whether it worked. So within one to two days, you'll start to notice some changes. Number one, here, I got one right here. The flower is going to drop off and the cucumber is actually going to start getting bigger very fast. So it goes from that little itty bitty tiny immature piece of fruit to within a day or two it will double in size. You'll see it get longer, you'll see it get a little bit fatter, it'll start to resemble less of a, a prickly little stem and more like a tiny jerkin 
cucumber. That's how you know it worked. If for some reason it didn't pollinate properly, um, it will eventually, um, it won't grow. That's the biggest thing you'll notice is, is that it's not changing size. Size. Every time you wake up in the morning, you come out and look at it and it is still the exact same size as it was the day that you pollinated it. It did not get pollinated. And what will eventually happen is the flower will drop off and the immature piece of fruit will turn brown or yellow and start to rot and fall off. And so that means it wasn't pollinated. There is a third option. So there's pollinated, not pollinated, and then there's something called partial pollination. And that's where you're gonna get like weird looking cucumbers <laughs> where they might be skinny at the top and then really fat at the bottom or the, or the reverse, really fat at the top and then the bottom never fills out and it's really skinny and it might be a little bit yellow. That means that it didn't get pollen around the entire center of the female part of the flower. And so they will grow and they are edible. They're just not pretty. I think that's the easiest way to say it. They're just not gonna be a pretty cucumber. Nobody's gonna know it if you chop them up and put them in a salad that one is an immature or incomplete pollination cucumber and one is a complete pollination cucumber. They're completely edible. They taste exactly the same. They just look funny. I don't mind funny looking vegetables. In fact, I have learned to love funny looking vegetables because when you grow your own garden, the one thing that I hear so much from so many gardeners is it doesn't look like the grocery store. You're right, it doesn't. It will never look like the grocery store because you're growing it yourself and the grocery store uh, you know, does a lot of different things that we don't do in our garden. They use a lot of different kinds of varieties that are meant to be in a specific shape with a specific type of skin so that that way they are uniform in its look um, and that that way they can travel for long distances. Sometimes they're sprayed with things um, to help them travel that distance that makes them look waxy versus matted. All kinds of stuff happens to our food in the grocery store <laughs> that is not natural and isn't what occurs in your backyard garden. So if you're ever sitting there looking at the things that are being produced in your garden and you're like, that doesn't look as big or that isn't the right shape, that's because nature does not create uniformed fruit. The reason the grocery store has uniform fruit is because they grow it that way. And anything that doesn't, um, doesn't make the cut or look like all the other ones uh, is wasted. Sometimes they use it um, in other ways, you know, as animal feed or, or compost or whatever, but you have perfectly edible food that just because it isn't perfect six to seven inches in size, or it might be fatter than the rest, or it might have an incomplete pollination. They say that people won't buy it in the grocery store, and I think that's probably true. So they toss it. But in your garden, there is no need to toss it. It is edible. I cannot say this enough. Please, please eat your weird looking food <laughs> in the vegetable garden. They are not all meant to look uniform. Okay, I'm gonna get off my soapbox. We're gonna get back to cucumbers. So now you have your seedlings. Um, you planted them by seed, they came up, they're growing up a trellis, they're doing wonderful, and then you start to experience issues. And you're like, what do I do? Okay, so there's a few main things that happen with cucumbers. Um, one of them is going to be a fungal issue or a mold issue or mildew issue. This is very common, especially where I'm at, <laughs> where we have pretty much 100% humidity all year round and it rains almost every day. <laughs> subtropical climate. We deal with a lot of powdery mildew, but there's other kinds like downy mildew and there's other type of fungal issues like wilt and, and things like that. And so the thing that I like to do um, is use a hydrogen peroxide and water spray. Let me grab it. Now you can use a spray bottle, reuse a spray bottle from inside your house, but I like to use these big ones just for ease of use. Um, and then the spray is very uniform. I can get it done really quickly with this sprayer because it's just sprays very well. Um, and so what I do is a hydrogen peroxide water mixture. And I even write it on here so that I always remember that this is my hydrogen peroxide mixer. And I always put how many and it's um, eight tablespoons per gallon. So this is a gallon. And so I put eight tablespoons of 5% hydrogen peroxide. It's the stuff that you see 
at CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, whatever. Um, it's the traditional hydrogen peroxide that we use for wound care. And I mix that up with the water and then I spray my plants probably, if they're not exhibiting any signs, like, you know, these rough looking leaves with the discoloration um, or, you know, wiltiness or dying or anything like that, I will probably spray them once a week. If they are exhibiting issues, I will probably spray them every two days just to get it under control. What you want to do when you have those issues is you want to clip these leaves off as soon as you see them and spray the rest of the plant so that the disease doesn't spread. Um, because that's what will happen is eventually it will spread through the whole plant and it will eventually kill the entire plant and all the surrounding plants. Like these guys, I think there's four plants here and this one fungal issue will transfer to all of the other plants. And so you want to get ahead of that. I like to use hydrogen peroxide in the past. I have used uh, copper fungal spray and then there are some non-organic methods out there that um, you can use as well. I, I, I try to go very organic in my garden. So um, for a while there I was using copper. Copper has a tendency to build up in the soil. Um, from what I've read, my research, I might be wrong, but from what I read in my research, it has a tendency to build up in the soil and over time that can harm the soil life. So I've moved to the hydrogen peroxide spray, which is um, much more able for the plants to handle. The next thing that you might experience is, is so you've gotten through your fungal issues. Now you have these beautiful cucumbers growing and then all of a sudden you take a look at the cucumber and there are these little pinprick holes in them with what looks like clear gunky stuff coming out of it and you're like what is that <laughs> that is a pickle worm uh, there's actually many different kinds of worms or squash bugs or all kinds of things that are going to go after your cucumbers <laughs> and so what i like to use for those is this other guy. Um, this is a mixture of spinocide and water. And I can't remember the measurements, but it's on the bottle. Um, so really stick to the bottle that you get. I get a concentrated bottle on um, Amazon. Um, all the things that we talked about today, I'm gonna put down into the description, the links to all of these so that you can um, find them very easily and get them if you want. But I mix this with the water and um, at the rate that the the bottle tells me to and then I spray this spinocide once a month your other option is BT BT is great I love BT but BT doesn't work very well in my environment because BT washes off with rain spinocide does not Spinocide is a bit of a stronger type thing. It's gonna kill a lot more than maybe what BT would do. It's a little indiscriminate in its, in its killing. Um, so I have to be very careful that I only spray my spinocide at night or when I know that my bees are not around because it can harm them. Well, BT is a little more forgiving. Now the, the problem I have with BT is the rain washes away BT. Spinocide on the other hand, once it has been put on the plants and dries, it adheres to the plant and so the rains that i get every single day don't wash it off and it lasts quite a bit longer bt on the other hand will wash off if you get a lot of rains which is a problem for me here which is why i use spinocide um, and it won't last as long so spinocide lasts like a month i only have to get in there and spray it once a month whereas bt you're probably going to want to be on a, a weekly spraying schedule because it does wear off fairly quickly that is what's going to kill the, the eggs and the small worms, or I think they're actually caterpillars that turn into a moth. It's a moth that, that does that. You'll see them at night. If you come out and you take a look at your cucumbers or your squashes at night, you're going to see these little like white moths flying around um, or grayish, grayish white moths flying around. Those are the guys that are laying the eggs that eventually become the pickle worm. And then the pickle worm will eat up the leaves. That's the way you'll actually see them first, is they'll have the leaves and the leaves will have like a fold 
and when you peel that fold open you're going to find them inside that fold hiding during the day and then at night they they remove from their fold and they go and they eat your cucumbers <laughs> all right so let's talk about the um the gross aspect okay so now you have all these beautiful cucumbers you didn't know that you had moths and pickle worms going on and all of a sudden you have all these pinpricks and all your cucumbers can you eat them yes you can eat them you can eat the pickle worm i don't encourage that <laughs> i i'm not telling you to eat worms um but if it's only like one or two or they've uh, you know decided to hang out on the bottom part um, and so you have the pin pricks here they don't go very far in and they don't travel around a lot inside of here um, if you catch them early what you do at that point is you take the cucumber off and the easiest way to do with this is cut the part that has the pickle worm in it um, i'm i'm like super curious so i always cut them open and look at them to see if they're still alive and stuff but you don't have to do all that all you have to do is cut that piece off throw it in your compost and and eat the rest of the cucumber the rest of the cucumber is good it was not touched by the pickle worm it is fine just throw it in your refrigerator it'll be good um, with your larger vegetables like winter squash if you still want to use that fruit which i always do just gonna throw it out there um, i'm the lady that will actually eat fruit that has been damaged by pickle worms it does not bother me but if you want to, and it's a larger size fruit and they burrowed in quite a bit, um, a really good way to get them to come out is to put them, push the fruit down into a bowl of water and they will naturally pull themselves out. Um, and then they'll come out and you can get rid of that. Now they have eaten and kind of pooped in that area where they have burrowed. So you definitely, might want to avoid eating that part when you're opening up that squash find the hole and just core that little bit of the hole out and you're good to go to use the rest of the squash so we've talked about fungal issues we've talked about bugs let's talk about fertilizer um, cucumbers are a flowering plant so they're going to want more of a potassium and phosphorus fertilizer than they're going to want a nitrogen fertilizer I have enough nitrogen in my beds that I don't really fuss with nitrogen when it comes to cucumber plants. But if I notice that they're not flowering very well or, you know, I have a bunch of male flowers, let me just say right here, male, a bunch of male flowers is normal. You are always going to have way more males than you are going to have females and you're going to see your male flowers come in first. They always do. It's just nature's way of saying, hey, bees, come take a look at us. We have a bunch of flowers. And then that way, when a female comes along, the bee is, you know, hanging out and doing its job amongst all the males. And then a female shows up and he just does that one too. It's a way of attracting those pollinators. So they push out huge flushes of males to, you know, entice the pollinators to come and pollinate the flowers before you ever see a female flower. And this could be weeks. But once you do start to see female flowers and all of a sudden you stop seeing female flowers or your male flower flushes start to decline considerably, I strongly encourage you to pick up some liquid fertilizer. Um, I like this one, Neptune's Har Harvest, um, and it's a tomato and veg, and it has the three numbers down here. This is nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus. I sometimes get those two numbers backwards. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. I'll have to look at that. Anyway, so the first number is nitrogen. Here, I can look back here. Nitrogen, phosphorus. Okay, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So the first one says it has a two-part nitrogen, four-part potassium, phosphate. <laughs> I always do this. And then two-part potassium. The potassium and the phosphate help with like root development and flower production and the health of the plant, where nitrogen is that green agent nitrogen you want on things like lettuce collards cabbage broccoli those kale brussels sprouts the green vegetables they love nitrogen they don't really care about the flowering part because we're not eating them for the flowers we're eating them for their greens but cucumbers tomatoes squash peppers all have this flowering part of the process that we need them to do and we need them to do well so that we can eat the the product of that flowering part of the plant and so that is the phosphate in the in the potassium 
And so I always take a liquid fertilizer about halfway through and I will mix it with water and I will um, water the plants with that. And that's usually all it needs. If you start to see the flower production reduce, hit it with a little fertilizer and let it keep going. Now I wanna preface that my beds, I spend a lot of time and effort focused on the health of the soil in my beds. Um, I have a whole video that is like a whole nother, <laughs> is I could probably do hour long videos on how to make your beds healthy, the soil healthy. And that is what feeds your plants. So you really need to focus on soil health. And I know it's not the sexiest of subjects. It's not the most fun of subjects, but once you really start to do that and you realize you don't need as much fertilizer and you know, you don't have to do much for your plants to grow and thrive and be healthy and happy and not be pressured by bugs and issues and stuff, you'll really start to find that uh, soil health is, is an actual sexy subject. <laughs> but I've really focused a lot on that. And if you have not, um, or your, your bed is brand new, you are going to have to consider that when you first plant your seed. You'll want to make sure that you lay down some sort of um, slow release fertilizer. And the, and the one I like to use is garden tone or tomato tone granular fertilizer. Now I would use tomato tone with this because it is more for flowering plants and garden tone is more of a catch-all for all different kinds of plants. Um, but tomato tone has a lot more of that potassium and phosphorus that you need for the fruiting plants. And so I will lay that down, scratch that in really good, probably a week or two before I plant the seed. But if you've been working on your soil, you don't have to do that. You just plant your seed, it will come up, it will be happy and healthy. Now let's talk about harvesting. Okay, so when can you harvest a cucumber? You can harvest a cucumber at any size. Can you see this guy way up here? He's tiny. He's, uh, what is that, three inches. I could harvest him now. I could harvest him when he has not even been like this one right here. They're, they're itty bitty tinies, right? They're, I don't even know if these are pollinated yet. That's how tiny they are. I could harvest those. <laughs> you can harvest a cucumber at any size, small size wise. The problem you're gonna run into is when you wanna harvest a cucumber and it's larger. So this guy that I keep pointing out, he's starting to get a little bit too big for this type. This is a pickling cucumber. He should not be this fat and he should not start to have this yellowing. You really wanna kinda of get him when he's all green. Um, I don't mind this because I know that my husband's eating them for fresh eating and I'm not using them for pickling. But if I was using them for pickling, this wouldn't be the best candidate because when you cut this open or cut it into spears, it's going to have a lot of seeds. The reason why it's getting fat around here is because it's producing more and more mature and fat seeds in there. And seeds, when it comes to pickles, are your enemy because they get mushy and not appealing to eat once you've pickled them and canned them. So you wanna pick them in between the two that I just showed you. That one's a little bit too big. That one is probably a little bit too small. Um, so there is a, is a nice size. And really what you're looking for is at what point does it look good that you wanna eat it. Um, they all taste the same. They all taste like cucumbers. Now, if you wait, for this big guy right here to turn completely yellow and for the spiky skin to fall completely off, it really has become inedible at that point. Well, you could still eat it. It's not appealing. It's bitter. It's seedy. It has less flesh to it. It really just has an awful taste, I think. So you really wanna get them before that yellowing starts. If you have a little bit of yellowing, you probably won't even notice. But if it has a considerable amount of yellowing, what I would encourage you to do is just leave it on there, like that guy. I might just leave him on there and he will uh, eventually get really big and really yellow and kind of nasty looking and squishy. That is the perfect time to harvest him to save his seeds for next season so that I don't have to buy them again. You can take those ones that have gotten away from you or you didn't notice and just let them stay on the plant and you can cut them open once they've gotten that big ugly yellow size and you can save the seeds from those and then you'll never have to buy seeds again. 
So there is a use for cucumbers at all sizes, but edible cucumbers can go from the tiny little ones that you see in the grocery store pickle aisles, the little jerkin ones, all the way up to this guy right here. And these are pickling cucumbers. So slicing cucumbers get much larger and much thicker and still stay green. And then English or burpless, I'm gonna show you a picture right here. <laughs> Mine got enormous. <laughs> and they were still green and they hadn't changed color to yellow and they still had somewhat of a prickly skin. So they were, they were great, they tasted amazing. What I usually do is I let them go until I start to see the Everest hint of yellow showing up on the cucumber and then I pick it right away. But if you're anxious to eat some cucumbers and your plant is full of green ones and they're small, by all means, grab a couple off there, bring them inside and eat them. They will still taste exactly the same. Why wait when you can have fresh cucumbers today? So that is everything about cucumbers from seed to harvest. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Head down in the description, check out some of those other videos I mentioned, as well as all of the items that I used today.